How's it, Mark? Welcome back to the Hoyaverse Podcast. Good to see you. Thanks for having me back, man. Yeah, first repeat guest. It's a special honor, and it's our first recording of the year as well in 2023. Made the cut. You made the cut, yes. <laughs> well, I'm excited to talk to you uh, about the Eddie, about some other things that you know that I just want to know. But the, some some of the audience want to know too. We, we're live on Instagram as well, so you we might get some questions from the Instagram people. Uh, this is gonna be just like a talk story sesh. Sounds good. So if there's anything weighing on your heart, feel free to talk about it. Mm-hmm. O- organic, no script. No laptop on my lap. It's whatever's. Let's <laughs> run it. Yeah. So, third place winner, Mark Healy. Big wave surfer, wave of the year winner, business owner, expert, waterman, everything. You've done a lot of things. We'll talk about that. But the Eddie just ran historic competition. First time since 2016, right? Yep. What was that like? Well, it was a the whole build up to it because we had one kind of false alarm with a swell where it was called on and then it, it was called off and then just the build up with the forecasting on this swell. Mm-hmm. Like the the call to run this event so far out was like the heaviest Babe Ruth pointing at the the back bleachers kind <laughs> of moment. Um I honestly I was a little pessimistic on the swell cuz I was like I, I'm not quite seeing what what they're thinking is going to happen here. But the Pat Caldwell was remained pretty confident. He remained steady with his forecast and everything. And um, man, that swell just outperformed. Yeah, insanely. I I heard some people say like, "Oh, I don't think it's gonna run. The conditions aren't gonna be good." Because it's almost like this like cat and mouse game with the waves, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> and you got to think that you know half of a twenty four hour day is nighttime. Mm-hmm. So you have to have a swell that lands and hopefully peaks during daylight hours. Mm-hmm. It's just so rare to get it consistently big and and peaking during daylight. Yeah. So so what does it take for them to run the eddy? Because they haven't ran it in seven years, about. Yeah, and that that's a funny thing. It averages in between each eddy. It's it's usually seven years. Really? Yeah. Um, huh. Yeah. So it, it, you need consistent twenty foot Hawaiian sets. So that's the criteria throughout the day. Yeah, and it, does it have to be within a certain period of time? Yeah, so it starts, uh, the starting date has cha- shifted, you know, over the years at different moments, but um, it's usually December through the end of February. Mm-hmm. Oh, so if it, so if it doesn't happen during that time, they just, they just wait to the next year? Yeah, it just doesn't run. Yeah. And can, for the people who've never heard of the Eddie, Eddie Aikau, can you share a little bit about him and, like, why this is such a big event yeah so um eddie aikau is the first uh lifeguard at waimea bay he saved hundreds of people's lives um just a a super talented humble capable hawaiian Mm -hmm. and um he is well respected for his big wave surfing and his life-saving skills um and he was on the first Hokulea voyage when it um took on water in the channel at night and they got stuck out there and he tried to, you know, he, he, he had a heroic feat trying to go and take a surfboard and paddle to land to get help because he was afraid that a lot of people weren't going to make it through the night. And um, the, they ended up being rescued the following day, but Eddie was never seen again. Mm-hmm. So it was like a very, the most selfless act you could possibly have. So um, they decided to start a contest in his memory and uh, kind of honor the tradition of Hawaiian water skills in big wave surfing. Yeah, and the fearlessness that he had to just put his life on the line to save others. You know, just throughout his whole life, that's what he, he, uh, you know, that that's what his what he was known for. You know, saving people and like putting his mm-hmm. life on the line. So. The way he went out was just perfectly like Eddie. And the competition is is perfect depiction of him, you know, just sending it on these huge waves. You know, everyone has yeah. heard the the term Eddie would go, right? Yep. He would he would go and he would do anything. He would charge this thirty foot wave that he would go out in the middle of the ocean mm-hmm. and swim just to find help. Yep. Like a crazy person. Yeah. And yeah. just very selfless. Yeah. You know, no ego whatsoever. Um yeah, just an amazing, amazing legacy, and the Aikau family has been running it for 
ever since, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I've been honored to be invited since I was 21 years old. So, I've so been, how many have you been in? Uh, I think I've been in four. Four? Yeah. So about old, seven dude. years, so 28, 28 <laughs> yeah. years, dad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I got invite. I got my first invite when I was 21. No way. Yeah. Who was, who was the youngest person ever to surf daddy? That's a great question. Pro- mm. I feel like Brock Little was like, Oh, really? Clark was, Little's brother? Yeah, Brock oh, wow. in that 1990 Eddie, I swear he was in his teens. I could be wrong, but he was pretty darn young. Wow, 21, that's crazy. And it, well, so how this Eddie ended was was like a true underdog story. Like everything about the event was just historic, right? Mm-hmm. First time uh, female surfers could join, epic swell, the, the guy who won Luke Shepardson lifeguard on duty came in as an alternate mm-hmm. and won the whole thing so awesome like what you can't <laughs> write these things right you can't. and it, that that's what's so beautiful about this swell and that how special the waves were i've never seen waimea that consistently big with perfect conditions mm-hmm. and on, on a day like that anybody can win it yeah because everybody has opportunity you See, know i was wondering about that because it's like you could go in the first heat and the waves aren't that good and somebody yeah. in the eight heat just goes and it's firing. Is that a kind of unfair? That's just the that's just the game. That's that's just the way it is. That's yeah. why I was, I had first heat and I was yeah. like, ah, darn it, because <laughs> you're at like a severe disadvantage if the swell is picking up throughout the day. Yeah, your, chance, your odds of winning are definitely hacked. Oh, yeah, you know, but it, you know, people definitely want to win it, including um, <laughs> including myself. But mm-hmm. it it really is a special event in that. You know, everybody's just so happy to be there and participate and Mm -hmm. do it justice. That's the one thing I notice about surfing um, compared to other sports is when somebody else wins, there's so many people celebrating that person. Mm -hmm. Um, And it could be just because it's not a team sport. You know, like if you're watching a football game or soccer game, the other team loses, they just walk out. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just like, they're all salty. But I see a lot of finals, uh, like the, the losing surfer, would go and carry the winner on his shoulders, celebrate with him, be happy, catch a party wave in. Yeah. Why, why is surfing different than, than other sports? I, I guess it's, you know, surfing is, is built so much around, it is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, like lacrosse probably isn't a lifestyle, so, so to speak, <laughs> or something like that, to where, like, I think the people who are drawn to surfing are just, like, really enjoy the the finer moments in life you know Mm -hmm. it's a it's an entirely unproductive activity that (laughs) consumes a lot of your your daylight hours so it probably attracts those kind of people and it's a tight-knit community huh because like someone that you you're competing against in the finals or whatever just in another heat like that's probably you've been surfing with that person since they were young probably right oh yeah i've known all those people for either from my childhood or at least 10, 15 years, yeah. you know. So yeah, is it, I have is it a lot of history with everybody, and everybody <laughs> has a lot of history with each other, like amazing times, tragic times, um, you know, times where you're butting heads in the past mm-hmm. or whatever it is, but it, it's, it really is like a big family. Yeah, I mean, is there any drama? I mean, is it like a Hollywood where it's cutthroat? I mean, it's still a competition. You want to win. You want to make money. You want to you know, impress the sponsors. Mm-hmm. Like, how, how do you balance that, like, that competitive edge versus, like, um, this is also my friend, but I also want to destroy you? Some people are better at that than others. Really? Because it's not a heat advancement um, format, everybody mm-hmm. gets to surf twice no matter what. Oh, they okay. pick the three uh, top waves out, out of your time surfing. Um, but when it's heat advancement, that makes it a lot more cutthroat. Mm. That's where, like, the jockeying for position and everything... Because um, when you're surfing in the eddy, you're surfing against everybody at once. Mm. You know, you're not just surfing against the guys in your heat. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I got that. Somebody on Instagram wants to know, uncle underscore comma underscore 808, how did you get into surfing? Um, My dad just took me surfing (laughs) when I was really little. Like, as far back as I could remember, he was um, out waterboarding me surfing <laughs> this is, something like just ha- take me out and put the leash on my leg and i'd just go get like dragged in the water and half drowned and <laughs> go back out again so at, at what age do you think you could like stand up on your own and actually surf <sighs> probably like 
Well, I was probably getting pushed in waves, but probably like four or five or something like that. That's probably a world record, right? Nobody's no. ever you done that see before. These kids these days. No, no, it's no. Crazy. That's a world record, guys. <laughs> He's the first one to ever do youngest surfer to ever surf on a board. Right here on the Hoyer podcast. True. Lies. <laughs> Somebody's gonna soundbite that. And just be like, this guy is so full of shit. Yeah, we should talk. Mark Ely is just a pompous <laughs> ass. <laughs> yeah, you. You're the last episode. I mean, the first episode you had with us. We got some really good clips, and I think like there were there were so many good comments. You, you have such a huge like support system, fan base. I saw a lot of good things, and there's just there's like one person or two people that just like don't even. It's like I swear they just don't even listen to the clip, and they comment whatever is on their mind. Yeah, it's like did you even like watch the clip? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's a, it's a great um, form of entertainment for unintelligent people <laughs> to do that. <laughs> I think people are bored. Honestly, it's mm-hmm. social media is a platform where you can share your opinions, and you know talk to other people without having to talk to them face to face. So there's like, you know, you're a little bit more brave, right? Mm-hmm. You're a comment section warrior. So it's easier to just voice your opinion because there's almost no repercussions. Yeah. But, but when it's so out of context, <laughs> you're just like, you didn't even listen, did you? Yeah. Like you're literally wordsmithing this thing together, like to try to fit something that's in your head. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it happens. I mean, it's like when, it's an exposure thing, you mm-hmm. know, it's a numbers game. If you're exposed to a certain amount of people, there's going to be some crazies in there too. Yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> that's what I was, I was also thinking while so, um, like trying to hold myself back from responding to people. Cause like when people respond to some of the comments um, or the videos on the Hoyverse podcast, it's, I almost like want to get defensive. It's like, I'm protecting my guests. You know, kind of that, like <laughs> yeah. that, like. But then you're on the hook. Yeah, exactly. I'm just then, like, then it's, it's like a fresh <laughs> pile of dog crap, and all the fly, the first fly lands on it, and like, oh, response, and everybody who wants yeah. to just be a troll is like, oh, we got one on. Yeah, exactly. So it's like hard to not give yeah. into that stuff, uh-huh. but also I'm just like, oh, you're so wrong, and like, like one of like your, the most popular clips from your episode was when you're talking about how like if a Hawaiian guy, you know grows up and just like sees like a holiday guy who's always like kind of doing people dirty like yeah it's like you wouldn't blame him for being like quote unquote racist and you explain it a lot more and like okay like it's such a good point i was like wow that's a really good perspective and then some people comment wow i can't believe you think that it's okay to be racist i'm like that's not even what he's saying (laughs) well and that's why i'm like saying quote unquote because everything's racist these days i'm like racist you know, I'm like, God, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so, like, stuff like that is, like... Trying to please everybody is a fool's errand. Mm-hmm. It will never, ever happen. Yeah, I, I believe that. I mean, there's always going to be something that you do that people don't like, even if 99% of people yeah. like what you do. There's always going to be some haters. And a lot of people don't like themselves. Yeah. <laughs> it's all projection. <laughs> it's a projection, yeah. you know? Yeah. We all do it yeah. one way or another, you know? Yeah, I believe sure that. Sure, I do. Somebody <laughs> says, uh, Mark, 12 years ago in Auckland, in airport. Hey. Don O'Deal. You know who that is? How's it going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then somebody wants to know, Jene Sweet wants to know, are you usually sore after an event like the Eddie? What do you do to keep your body healthy and ready for the next event? Yeah, I'm extremely sore right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my, yeah, I'm not walking right right now. My inside of my legs and like growing is pretty much not happy with me mm. i did some involuntary pilates in my first heat <laughs> lip landed on my tail and i did the splits and like i can't do the splits yeah but i did them and uh so that's not feeling so hot and then uh yeah my neck is wrecked so now nowadays when i wreck my neck or like hit my head hard hitting the water um i'll get like nauseous for like two really? days too Dang. i'm just taking so many hits it's like ct <laughs> <laughs> so that explains a lot yes exactly <laughs> so for us normal people who don't surf huge waves what what is it like try to explain to us like the best of your ability what it's like falling down like taking off and just not making it just falling down it's always like water. yeah it's like 
you know, it's like opening a fortune cookie. You, you don't know what you're <laughs> going to get. You're like, oh, my God, how am I going to fall this time? Yeah. And you're you're just, like, waiting for contact because no two times are the same. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting thing about um, surfing and waves in general is you and me could be right next to each other and have completely different experiences, mm-hmm. falling on a wave or getting caught inside by a wave because yeah. it's just chaos. So you kind of just like, oh, here comes a hammer kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just try to, yeah, keep your limbs fairly stabilized so things don't go popping out of socket. And uh, try not to get the wind knocked out of you when you hit. Because you're going so fast and on those big waves, you hit the water, it looks like one of those like wakeboarding wipeouts or something. Yeah, you're like, kind of skipping. You just skip. Yeah. The water's pretty hard. Um, yeah, and then you get sucked up and pound it again but uh yeah it's always a an anxious feeling when you're flying through the air waiting for impact you're not knowing if your board's going to be under you and you're going to hit that yeah. or whatever it looks cool but also scary when you're watching it from afar yeah but it, also kind of like it you is when you're doing it too <laughs> it's cool and scary imagine what it's like being that guy <laughs> yeah I, I can't even imagine at what point do you so you guys have these like life vests or like these things where you pull and it inflates yeah so it's like, um uh there's a few there's a few different styles of them um i was running the patagonia one um in my heat so it's a vest that goes under your wetsuit hmm. um it has four co2 canisters two on the front two on the back and you pull it pull the cord so there's two cords here and you pull up to get to fire the back one and the front one at the same time if you haven't already fired the front. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, you can pull it down if you just want to fire one. But uh, those things are really nice to have. Mm. It's, so, it's not a bad idea. <clears throat> at what point do you decide, like, I need to pull this or I can just make it without it? Because once you pull it, you have to go on shore, right, and get nope. it off. Oh, you don't? No, you can deflate it. Oh, I thought I thought I saw somebody um, in the contest. They had to go to shore because it wasn't, like... Maybe they like, couldn't get up get a hold like because you wear those contest jerseys over them and sometimes mm. you get so blown up like the jersey goes over all the pulls and everything again yeah. and you can't like find it or reach things everything gets readjusted every time you wipe oh, okay. out kind of thing. that makes sense because i saw somebody going in and there's like a nascar pit stop it's like during yeah. the heat and they had to like try to do it really quick the i think it might have been billy kemper maybe yes yeah. yes i think it was yeah, yeah billy kemper that guy's a beast too yeah he was sending yeah uh jessa bella underscore wants to know how do you deal with the adrenaline come down after surfing big waves um i kind of i i like it like it doesn't some people crash and get depressed and get all weird like i know people who've gotten like weird for like a year afterwards really yeah Hmm. um but i like it i feel like i can kind of like be on cruise control i can do like chores happily <laughs> and things like that I yeah. think my cup has been filled you know do what what was more scary like surfing the big waves at Waimea or Jaws um Jaws is scarier to me the reef is that why it's what, what, the what wave is just it's just mean <laughs> it's meaner it's just mean <laughs> those maui waves are this. <laughs> oh it well and it's going down the line like yeah. you got to get up and go mm. um you're not going into the channel so to speak usually it's like you you have to make some moves yeah and on my backhand being backside out there it's just you're just you can't see the top of the lip like because mm-hmm. you're looking out of the corner of your right eye and so when you don't look at something squarely with both of your eyes your depth perceptions out of whack mm. so you're always wondering like you see this lip and you're committing to a line and you're like I, I i imagine in the simulation in my brain of what this wave looked like when i started paddling for it i imagine the lip will end up breaking there mm. and i'm 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 surfing accordingly but it could easily not break there and it could just be like on my neck it's a fortune cookie yeah it is <laughs> you're just like oh, well, i guess we're doing this yeah that's so <laughs> gnarly i can't uh i don't think i'll ever get to that point in my life but it's always it's just so crazy to me watching though these clips on instagram like these wipeouts even like how people are catching these waves the speed like watching people catch the huge waves in portugal yeah like to me i'm just like you fall you're dead 
just whipping Ugh. those. I mean, that's the thing. It's random. Like you, can, yeah. you see people go down on like the worst waves sometimes, and they're just like boom, pop right up. And you're like, how yeah. did that happen? And then something that's like very average. Eat it, Grom. <laughs> dogs we got a here. first ever dog in the Hawaii verse podcast. Um, Rosie, say hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then sometimes it's it's usually the ones that don't look like the worst ones that get people, unfortunately. That's that's a good point. I feel like it's always the, um, like even surfing, I just longboard, right? It's always yeah. like the weird, funky, small days that I lose the board the most. Mm-hmm. It's like... It's or, weird. Uh, yeah, or like a weird moment where like, mm. you know, something hits you at the perfect moment where your whole body, like that split mm. millisecond where your whole body is touching the face of the water, falling on it, but there's so much surface area that there's not a lot of give, and you get hit by something else at that time, and it's like, it's the, the amount of force mm. that's exuded is like a thousand x yeah you know what it would normally be if you just had already broken the surface tension of the water yeah like, it's just all this random stuff happening yeah it's like um you did you hear about that football player damar hamlin don't he, he collapsed on the football field oh yeah yeah it's just like they said like he got hit at the perfect time right before between a heartbeat and it like sent him sent him into cardiac arrest sure about that <laughs> sure about that we can go into this <laughs> Brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> I was I I'm not gonna lie, I I've had my thoughts on that, but I I think it was also just like it was so random because I've never seen that happen ever in sports. I've been watching football Have my whole life. Have you seen it happening to everyone around the world all the time? Young, healthy Did people dropping more over recently dead? than than now than ever. I must be on like I. <laughs> I have, I have the threads that I'm on, so I, I, I get all of this in one place, and it's crazy. Like mm. in Europe, everywhere around the world, just people just Soccer bang, players, heart yeah. attack, bang, heart attack. Yeah, that's not normal. I, I mean, I've heard because you know my sister-in-law Lay, she sends me a bunch of stuff, so I, I read them and I watch the videos. Like, um, it's it. What interests me is that they've been saying that there's been like. Um, I don't know, announcements or this article saying that people are going to get more heart attacks or like Oh, heart there, problems. there's all kinds of stuff. The next, Children have heart attacks too. Yeah, but in the like, next really? couple of years, they're saying it's going to happen more. But it's weird how they're just saying that right after the pandemic, which yeah. at least, I mean, it makes me at least question it. I'm not saying I believe every you single see that, one. see that recent news one? Which one? I didn't know about this before, but there's a heart attack season. It's right <laughs> after flu season. Like, oh, yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Sure. Yeah. See, I I think wh- whether you believe it or not, please question it. There's think a lot it. of coincidences. Yes, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, how how have how is all of this happening now in the last two to three years? But it's never not not saying it's never happened. Like there's always rare occasions that it yeah. has happened. Players collapse, people have heart problems. But it's happening more now than ever. Mm-hmm. To me, I don't know if that's coincidence. It's hard it's hard to say it is. Yeah. But I don't know. But I mean you know, what's your your risk reward there? You could go yeah. get your booster that doesn't stop you from getting it or spreading it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and maybe have a heart attack. <laughs> like what? Yeah. What's that? That like risk reward ratio there is that? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pointing hit pretty heavily in one direction. I feel like. Yeah, I think with like the the last couple of years too. I feel like we're almost getting out of it. And what I did appreciate on one commercial I saw because before they were very biased. Like do this or you die. Yeah. <laughs> I I did see it's changing a little bit because they've gotten in trouble. You know, like. There's been like, um, or like a uh, jury or whatever stuff where they they asked the people certain questions that they couldn't answer it or they admitted to not knowing. Oh yeah. You know that the eff- efficacy of it, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I did see a commercial where it's like, um, this is one of the options. Check with your physician for other options or just like something. I'm just like this Starting is to change. this is what I would have appreciated early on instead of like do this or you die instead of like. Think about the uh, options, what works best for you, and that's okay. Think of all the lawsuits yeah. that are going to come out of this. <laughs> all the people yeah. that got fired for it. Yeah. 
Yep. I hope they get their due. Yeah. I mean, same. I know. I know people who who've gotten fired. I hope they get back pay. I hope they get their jobs back. Everything. I, I'm really interested on this Instagram live. I'm sure that the tone <laughs> of the comments are changing yeah, rapidly. We just lost all our followers. <laughs> <laughs> we just lost 2,000 followers. <laughs> I love doing that. I literally do that, you know. I just try to see how many followers I can lose in a post. <laughs> and then I gain them back up slowly. I'm like, ah, oh, it's time for a zinger. <laughs> see, you gotta keep we got to call a herd. Yeah. They, they got to know what they signed up for here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can cha- change it a little bit because we have another question. No freebies, 808. It wants to know are there any monster surf spots that you still have yet to experience around the world yes there's a whole bunch of them you got some on top of mind um not that i'm gonna say <laughs> oh <laughs> secret <laughs> Shh. yeah um there's places but it's just um logistical nightmares in Ooh. time like the odds that i'll actually be able to go duck out for two months in the middle of nowhere and go sit on a <laughs> potential spot and spend a bunch of money be away from my family yeah. are, are pretty slim it's probably going to yeah. be and now you have a somebody earlier daughter. in their careers with no responsibilities yeah. that can go and do that you know so yeah i mean if you want we could say you got kidnapped we could host we could yeah, set it up exactly. we, we have the resources <laughs> stage my kidnapping yeah. <laughs> do you think your perspective on things changed since you have um You've ha- you've had your daughter? Oh yeah, definitely. Like even these big wave surf contests, are you like hesitant? Is your you know is your family more like Mark? You shouldn't do this. Well, the the contest is the safest place you ever do it. I guess yeah. Hawaiian Water Patrol was kicking butt that day. Mm-hmm. It was the best display of ocean rescue I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Those guys were on fire and constantly busy. So you got like the best guys in the world right there. You got a big channel. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's time to send. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you, um, know, like the people, the people who are good at saving people or the people who are just trying to be heroes, you know? So if somebody like the water comes up, people are getting swept away or something's happening. There's always like a few people who just run and try to help. Yes. Are, is that helpful or is that not helpful? It's helpful in, in, until usually what what you learn, you know, is to somebody's got to be like the point person mm-hmm. or designate themselves. That's why you train and you learn um, rescue s- skills, life saving skills. Um, I'm an instructor for big wave risk assessment group, BRAG. So we teach like that kind of stuff. But uh, until somebody the person that has the most knowledge and capability kind of becomes a point person. It's like, you do this. You go call 911. Can you give me some space? You go and do this. Mm. You go and grab that person's stuff or whatever it is. You help stabilize the injury. Um, get me a towel. Put over this giant cut. Whatever. Um, but helping is never a bad thing. Mm. It's just a bad thing when there's too many people. Yeah. And it's so like many hands hindering progress. Yeah. Yeah. So... While watching the Eddie, uh, <laughs> the lifeguards kept warning people, like, hey, don't get too close to the beach. Don't do this. Obviously, people don't listen. No. They get swept away. I saw a lady get uh, pinned under a big tree branch. I've seen people's bags start flo- floating in the water, but they're still trying to save the bag. Yeah, after after my first heat, I was in the shower under the tower, and Wassel's... On the mic, there's a big close outside. He's telling everybody, get back, get back. Make sure you get all your kids back. Because that's the number one thing. It's like, that's what makes me mad is when people have little kids mm-hmm. and they're just, it's, if that kid gets swept out, that kid's gone. Mm-hmm. Might as well have like sent that kid off a cliff, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Wassel's warning everybody. And then, boom, I see, see a come, wave come into the crowd and then I see them peeling out of the tower and I can't see what's going on over there. So I run out because I'm like, oh my God, is like, is there a kid getting sucked in the shore break? There's probably like multiple people, you know? So I run out and uh, there's a guy like tumbling down and you see something small about to end up like all the way in the water. Um, and it ended up being a little dog, but we thought <sighs> it was a kid. And so running that Heavy. wassels like running and then, I, I realize it's a dog and they're ahead of me there. So I'm like, okay, screw the dog. <laughs> and and uh, then there's these two chicks and one was like just gripping her Louis Vuitton purse. 
And I just like grabbed her, helped her up, and then um, started looking around. But this is like after my heat. You're having to do this stuff. Yeah. And then the other guy goes running back down there right after seeing all that happen. He's like, I'm looking for my phone, man. They're like, get away from the water. I need to find my phone. I'm like, your phone is dead. And you're going to be dead, too. Like, yeah. beat it. It's insane. Um, but it's it's really interesting to see. And human nature in that people could be using their hands to not get sucked down. But instead, they'd rather hold, hold their phone out of the try to keep it out of the water or their purse it's like screw that thing make sure mm-hmm. you don't get sucked out you're gonna you could die yeah it's so weird our little yeah. attachment to to these things yeah those you know. moments make make me think like what would i do if my house caught on fire yeah what is it like what would i save you know mm-hmm. in, in the moment i'm gonna be like oh gotta get my phone gotta get my laptop gotta get my money you know yep um but if what if my room wherever it, th- it was the door was on fire there was fire in it would i go in would i just would i chance it would i just go out i'll lose everything yeah it's i guess you don't really know until you're in that moment mm-hmm. yeah so i just hope i'm never in that situation <laughs> me neither yeah well i mean that's why people really do love their phones though <laughs> it is crazy like i i saw that multiple times that day yeah. they're just like no, I will I will get sucked out into this raging ocean to be able to hold this phone up. Yeah. And and it's already gotten soaked too. Yeah. You know, like, see, I don't care for that. I don't re- I I do respect the people who fall or um they're about to like lose balance and they keep their beer up and they <laughs> save it. That's impressive to me. It is. I respect that. It is. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> you know, I I no, don't know if you've seen videos or just friends that, you know, they take a spill or I don't know, like somebody oh, yeah. pushes them in the pool, but they, they got their beer up. Yeah. <laughs> respect. Have a, have, a, have a blowout on a slipper and still pull it yeah, off and yeah. spill the beer. Yeah, respect. There, there's more important things in life than phones. Like beer. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even drink. Mm-hmm. I just support. <laughs> yeah. So this was the first year that uh, women could enter the Eddie. Yes. I thought that was super cool. Yeah. There was some hammers. They and put on a good I performance. Didn't, like, I didn't even know that. I mean, this is very, it's going to sound very ignorant of me. It's like, I didn't know, like, women surfed big waves like that. They like, do, but they stepped the it up. Yeah. They stepped it up. That, um, that was impressive. Yeah, it was cool because I was in the first heat, and Andrea Moller, is who, who's a, a buddy and somebody I respect a ton, um, she was in that heat. So she was the first woman to catch a wave during an eddy. Mm-hmm. So I got to be that's, out there for that. It was that's historic. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. Do you think somebody, um, a, a woman, would be able to win the eddy one day? It's stiff competition, man. Yeah. It's definitely possible. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Okay, so I, I I I was thinking like I always thought like a goofy footer still hasn't won the Eddie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's damn near impossible as a backsider to win it. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, there 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 has been a lot of debates in recent years about like women trying to you know be involved in male sports or you know transgender males in women's sports. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. It's a, it's a, I'm just getting towed <laughs> right into this one. I'm setting you up. Oh, my God. No, because I, I see it. And, of course, I have my own opinions because I've played sports all my life. And, like, like that one swimmer that was a man identified as a, a woman. And they had a mm-hmm. South Park episode on this. Super funny. Um, and this person South dominated. Park really does the Lord's work. They are really dead. Even the Hawaii episode was so good. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> Go watch South Park. I got to uh, get that guy on here one day. Uh, um, but I don't think that's fair. Like, No. I'm not even going to talk about the identifying thing. But just it, I don't get how how that is possible. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the clip with Dave Chappelle was like, you know, if LeBron James were to identify as a woman and joined the WNBA, he'd average like 900 points. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, and it depend- it's very sports specific, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you just have different builds. Yeah, and it's it's just physiological. Yeah. Like biologically, it's just people are built different. Um, so I think there's some sports that it's just not physically possible. I think from a physicality standpoint, though, like 
surfing probably has a good shot. That's and that's where I was gonna get to because in like physical sports like MMA, yeah, like if they where do you ever see a six five, two hundred. 60 pound female you know that's fighting against like but, but, francis and Ganu. but just think of like the the natural selection process of men going to war and mm-hmm. doing violent things for you know the ones who would survive ended up having kids mm-hmm. you know that that same process didn't happen for thousands and thousands of years so much on the women's side mm-hmm. so you're gonna have like some sturdier sturdier males probably mm-hmm. to take blunt force impacts and stuff like that like it makes sense yeah so d- so do you think surfing could be a sport where women could compete with men yeah yeah like i think carissa or something i yeah and i think i think that in the next decade the part of surfing that's going to progress like like exponentially more than the rest is women surfing mm. you see there's like eight-year-old girls that are so gnarly yeah. That's why this, this, you know, the difference is it's going to tighten closing. up. There are some super talented young girls. And I think we're just seeing the stage where it's like it's starting to get parabolic for how fast the progression in women's surfing is. Yeah. I I mean, I, w- I would love to see that. That would be cool. Um, Somebody says uh, Auntie Ro was looking down and smiling. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um Okay, I guess we don't have to go um, any deeper into that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, your business because I want to se- uh, segue into like uh, surfer pay. Yep. Because on the surface, you're professional, you know, just being a professional Everybody thinks, wow, you've made it. You're successful. You're probably getting paid a lot. You're like, we put these people on a pedestal, you know, especially surfers in Hawaii. Like, yep. you got you got a K next to your followers, you know, your followers count. And so you're like this godlike figure. But, you know, maybe you're just teaching surf lessons on the side, yeah, selling people, coconuts on the side of the road, you know. People um, have a very skewed... Um, it's kind of all over the place what people suspect, like, different surfers make. Mm-hmm. And even within, like, surfing, it, there's a lot of, like, wondering and surprises when you find out, like, oh, that's what that contract was for that guy? Like, oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I would have pegged that one. Well, um, same with the the Eddie. I was like, oh, whoever wins this, they got to get at least, like, $500,000. <laughs> I, I saw the check. It was like, what, 350,000 Hawaiian miles or 150,000 Hawaiian miles, whatever it was? I don't know. Well, it, that's a sponsorship issue, and, yeah. you know, hopefully that changes there. But it's like you look at the, the WSL event at Jaws. That is a dangerous event. You can go, like, get really, really hurt in that event. Um, it has huge views. I heard it's 20 grand for first now. 20 grand? That's less. People were winning the Eddie in, in the 90s, early 90s, and making 50 grand. What? Wait, it, why is it like that? Like Because they got a chokehold on it. You know, they, they, they own the event, and they're like... You know, it, and what also happened is when they made the f- the women's side equal pay, they didn't add more money. They just take away from the the men's side Dang. a lot of times. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's just a travesty, dude. It, people shouldn't be putting on these kind of clinics and pushing it at the level that they are for less money than people were getting paid in the '80s and '90s. Dang, and that's not counting inflation. Oh yeah. <laughs> does it like does it upset peanuts. you? So we we live in a world where there are ways to make money that there there ha- hasn't been you know in past. Uh, like a girl could or a guy could take a three minute video of themselves on OnlyFans <laughs> and make twenty thousand dollars. I mean, if I put these feet on, <laughs> hey 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 how hey much hey, money hey. I'd S- make? subscribe. So don't, don't give them don't give <laughs> know, them that, that's it. free content. <laughs> I should have been doing this in socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to pixelate it. Does that? <laughs> yeah, well, Jordan, blur that out. <laughs> the does that upset you as a like a professional athlete who are, who's putting their life life on the line? Um, 
It doesn't. No, it doesn't upset me. I don't really. I don't really view the. It's not like my worldview. I don't get like upset. I just acknowledge that it's a thing that's happening and wonder why. I think the the only like slightly upsetting point is what that says about humanity in general. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd say it's more disappointing than anything. Yeah. But um. You know, we're not we're not like curing childhood cancer or anything. We're surfing. We get to live a great lifestyle. I ain't yeah. complaining. Yeah. Uh, something Jordan and I talked about when uh, Jordan hopped on the podcast is like the term first world problems. Yeah. You know, it's like a lot of things is just perspective, you know. It really like, is. A lot of things we're talking about um, um, identifying as a certain gender. Mm -hmm. These people in Africa who are struggling to get water and living through malaria, that's not even on their radar, you know? And like, I don't, it, it doesn't bother me. People can think whatever they want. Just don't make it my problem. <laughs> Please. I got enough shit going on. Well, I think it's hard <laughs> as a public figure on social media. It's like, it's, people expect you to have an opinion on something. And once oh. you have an opinion that's different than theirs, then you're ridiculed. So it's like a lose-lose situation. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's tough. Um, Somebody asked, I don't know why, <laughs> they said, why surfing? Why surfing? <laughs> why surfing? <laughs> Party boy dubs. Hey, I think that's my uh, old football coach. What's up? <laughs> why, why surfing? Why, why surfing? Why, surfing? <laughs> why not? <laughs> Sport of kings. <laughs> Haven't you heard uh, Timothy Leary's breakdown about surfers? No. It's amazing. Look it up. I can't quote it, but okay. uh, but look it up. It's, the, a, it's a good ex explanation, I feel. Have you have you watched the Drunk History episode of Eddie Aikau? Have you ever I, did, I have. <laughs> no, yeah. funny. It was rad because the guy was like so passionate about it. Like he had heard this story and it was like so inspiring. Yeah. And he's just trying to share it with his friends, but he's like he's really struggling. Yeah, yeah. That those are funny. I like those. I think maybe we we can have like a, a drunk drunk history on the Hoyvers podcast when Mark comes on next. <laughs> yeah, one well, year. Drink, I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> what? There's probably more in the fridge. I'm on vacation, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to make sure I stay have maximum inflammation in my neck yeah. right now. I saw I saw uh, an article when I googled you. Why Mark Healy cracks a beer at five, like five o'clock or something. Really? Yeah. Did. Did you not see I, that? I don't remember these things. <laughs> yeah. I probably should, you know, stop hitting my yeah, head. Yeah, it said so you're much. one of the few uh, um, surfers with a drink sponsor or, like, a beer sponsor. Oh, yeah. I did have a beer sponsor for mm -hmm. a while, um, and I do drink beer. Yeah. But it's, like, it's in my blood, you know? <laughs> I, the beer? <laughs> that, too. <laughs> I come from a long lineage of beer drinkers, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, ki it's kind of... Um, Cool, cool to think about um, these like professional athletes or these like public figures as just normal people because <laughs> it's, it's like you just watching somebody on Instagram or seeing somebody on TV you're just like they're not like us but no. we're just chilling on your porch talking it, stories you're drinking a beer just but like, I do people. like I am on it on like a lot of my health stuff my hydration stuff and, and things like that and leading up like I'm I'm getting worked on I'm do a lot of maintenance and, and preparation, but at the same time, like, you know, you got to let the dog off the leash every now and then. Yeah. Go crazy otherwise. I, I wanted to ask you that. What is your lifestyle, your routine, like um, preparing for an event, just your, like, everyday life, yoga, meditation? What, what is your diet like? I just try to try to do what the ocean's telling me, you know, go go dive, go surf, go fish get some exercise in, um, you know, spend as much time as I can with my daughter and yeah, a lot of like planning and emails and phone calls. And since we're in Hawaii and West coast, East coast and Europe are so far ahead in time, you kind of got to be on that early. Um, so yeah, I, I'm usually getting up before light and mm -hmm. getting started with the day. Nice. So if you didn't have these side hustles, would surfing be sufficient for your lifestyle? Probably. I, I actually don't. The only surf industry sponsor I have is Wave Riding Vehicles, who makes my boards. Hmm. Longest running sponsor <laughs> I've had. Nice. Loyal folks over in uh, East Coast, man. They've yeah. helped me so much over the years. But, uh, God, I don't even know. I, I think it was... I think I've been with them for, like, almost 20 years. Wow. 
Just and crazy. is it a paid sponsor or like merch? Because I feel like a lot of people are surfers are sponsored, but it just could be just like free stuff. They pay for entry. They take care of all my boards. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's that's huge. That expense would be. So how does how, how does a surfer make money? A surfer makes money primarily through endorsements. Not really the contest. Some do, but you got to be like a contest warrior mm-hmm. to be doing that. Someone yeah. like, like what's a good example? Like, you know, somebody like John John could make a living off of Just prize surfing. money. Just surfing. Just off of prize money. Prize money. Like he wouldn't be getting rich, yeah. but he would be, you know, doing pretty good. That's crazy. Because, like, you think of the best athletes in the world in, mm-hmm. in their respective sports, mm-hmm. and they're making millions, millions. Like, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, $500 million contract. Well, it's all, and that's the thing you got to remember. It's not about fair. Nobody's running a, a charity. These are all for-profit businesses. Mm-hmm. So the amount of merchandise they can move is basically, like, it determines the, mm. the pay scale. And for the most part. So surfing isn't as popular, I guess? Yeah, I guess it's not as... I mean, you can play a team sport anywhere. Yeah. Football, basketball is... Yeah. You know, everybody watches it. They got a lot of eyeballs glued to that. Um, yeah. I, uh, that's that's my take on it. Yeah. It, it It's hard to wrap my head around it because it's such an ancient sport. It's been around longer than probably a lot of these yeah. sports. And it's... Definitely it's longer a, than basketball. Yeah, football, <laughs> football definitely <laughs> football. Um, but it's almost not like respected as much. It, it I kind of, in a way, I kind of like it. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't want to be mainstream. Yeah, like that's what what got so. That's what I think, kind of hurt the surf industry in general. Is like things got too mainstream. It got mm-hmm. too watered down. It's you know, you got your when your stuff starts showing up in Target and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> it's kind of, I, sure. I just got my Mark Ely bobblehead <laughs> Target. <laughs> Put it but right next to my John John. There's, there's nothing wrong with, like, having a successful business, but, you know, there's something special about a rebellious surf culture. That's how it was before. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally... I yeah, like I, it. Whatever. Yeah. That's just my flavor. No, that's what uh, Jeff Hubbard said. Mm-hmm. When I, I talked to him, that he likes that it's kind of just like this hardcore niche thing, like bodyboarding. You know? It, which it very much is. Which, which bodyboarding is Dude, more. Those guys a lot had to than... like f- figure it out to get around the world, and you, you'd always see the bodyboarders at these, you know, crazy slabs and waves, and yeah. you run into the same kind of people all over the world at yeah. different places, and they're just like, they're making it work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't got big budgets. That. Yeah, uh, yeah. I totally have respect <laughs> for that. All right, I'm going to read this, these last things from the Instagram live, and I'm going to shut it down. Somebody says, what's up, boss man from St. Louis, Missouri? How's it? Uh, same person, Truvu W says, what is your motivation song to get you hyped before surfing? Motivation song to get me hyped? Um, hmm, it depends. Uh, you know what's one that I like, like going down to Pipeline? Um, Because I'll be driving down the hill looking at the waves. I know it's firing. Is um, Alien Weaponry. Alien Weaponry. By who? Kiwi metal band. (laughs) They got a a couple sick songs. (laughs) We got to find that. (laughs) Yeah. Kiwi. So so they're like seeing like metal, like kind of like hardcore. In Maori. In Maori. Yeah. Wow. So think of like the difference, like putting metal. And like a haka chant together. Mm, I can see how that can be motivating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like by the time I'm looking for a parking spot at Pipe, I'm just breathing fire. And your tongue's ah! like, <laughs> Where, where's the wave? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see Mark M- Mark Healy coming down. <laughs> he, he appears to have some marks <laughs> on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Only freckles. <laughs> All right. No freebies. 808 says, imagine if the pro surfers gave interviews like in NASCAR where you'd mention all the, your sponsors doing interviews. Yeah. Just I mean. on what we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> right, and then uh, Truvu W wants to know, favorite, what's your favorite food to eat on the islands? Favorite food to eat? I mean, it's so, just so hard to... <sighs> I love Lomeo eel. Mm. Um, raw fish, uh, axis deer. Nice. Axis deer French cut rib rack is awesome. Um, what else? 
Hmm. Yeah, I think those would be my favorites in Poi. Okay. So what's, what's your favorite, like, genre of food? Genre, I would say... God, that's a tough one. I like Korean. I think. Nice. Respect. I'm married to one, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Korean, okay. I got a debate for you. All right, yes, yes. So let me, let me, I'm um, sure this is somehow going to offend somebody. So <laughs> I love it. Okay, we'll stay on longer for the, the, so the s- IG people can hear it. Anyways, I'm, no, my position is that Korean food is the Mexican food of Asia. The Mexican food? Okay, what do you mean? Because everybody by that? can eat Mexican food. Like everyone mm-hmm. around the world, I feel like, can eat like the main Mexi- Mexican uh, dishes and enjoy it. Mm hmm. It's not so like polarizing. Okay. You know, like I feel like Korean food and it's got like that smokiness to it and like a lot of savory stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's like the most generally palatable food from the entire continent of Asia. Okay. So, so, so Korean food is like the Mexican food. Yeah. Uh, in their like yeah. sides. Exactly. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so I'm Korean and Japanese, and I go every t- time I I go somewhere I order Korean chicken, chi- or chicken katsu, or meat chun. Ooh, Those are like my, my my triangle right there. It takes um, a special kind of person to do a good meat chun. But the egg that, still yes, sticks to it. Yes, or n- not too much egg or too much meat. Yeah, mm-hmm. plus the sauce. But I don't think I've traveled enough. In those certain areas of the world, to I went have to an China, on that. and the food was pretty rowdy. Yeah, it was nuts. <laughs> I don't know what. Let us know what you guys but think. No, That's a but good you know what? The best food because we were like, we were basically being taken care of by like government people. We went okay. for an event riding a tidal bore up a river, and so oh wait, you know, oh, yep, what? A tidal bore. So it's a wave. Exactly from a tide, like a giant king tide stacking up, and it creates a wave that goes up a giant river, like what? 10 oh, kilometers. I've never heard of that. Longer than 10 kilometers. That's crazy. It goes way up, and you can ride it up river. Oh. And so, like, there's a festival. It's like the Silver Dragon Festival. All these people come down. Um, <clears throat> so they flew us in to go surf it. But we're being taken care of by, like, dignitaries and stuff. Like, they had full guys, like, spying on us and watching us and stuff. During mm-hmm. the time, it was pretty trippy. But, um, so I think they were really, like, taking us to eat at places where it was, like, all delicacies. It would be, like, cold, boiled, soft-shelled turtle oh. with, like, no seasoning. Chicken and, feet. Yeah, chicken feet. <laughs> like, a, a whole, like, kind of baby chick. Yeah. Just boiled in, like, cold juice. And you're just like, oh, my God. Like, the duck tongues were always a go-to fried rice and were, like, the best things, usually. Mm. But the best meal I had when I was in China is when we actually went to, like, the government, uh, like, Olympic training center. And oh, the, nice. That was a Chinese food I knew, like, yeah. what the employees ate there. Like like at uh, Panda Express. <laughs> Similar, <laughs> but better. Panda <laughs> Express is pretty ratchet. Man. I don't know. You know, okay, um... Uh, staying on this topic one thing i noticed around the world so you see asian food everywhere like even in when i was in madagascar i'd see mm-hmm. chinese food and korea there's a korean restaurant that opened up when i was in madagascar i almost never see mexican food in foreign places yeah in like outside of america or i guess mexico yeah i mean right? Africa would be a probably a tough spot to. I mean, but there's Asian food. <laughs> to find a Mexican joint. There's there's, there's Asian. But food? they, the, but the Chinese have been trading throughout like the world for Chinese so everywhere. long. There's Chinese everywhere. Everywhere. And I've, they've been everywhere yeah. for a long time. Yeah, that's that was probably the most surprising thing I got from all my travels: Spain, Argentina, Madagascar, like different continents. Is that there's a Chinese person running a restaurant yeah. or a business that speaks perfect whatever language that country has. Yes. It's crazy. It's pretty... Yeah. Hats off. Yeah. You know, like, to to have the guts to, like, show up at a place and be like, yeah, I'm completely foreign to here and I'll always be the outsider, but I think I'll have the only shop in this whole area. I'm just going to start a shop. Yeah. They do it every time. Yeah. I think the difference between somebody moving here to Hawaii and starting a business... Is that I feel like those people they learn the culture, 
mm-hmm. in those places. Whereas over here, I don't feel like they do it as much, but they use the culture. Like, oh, for it's sure. It's like Hawaiian barbecue 808. <laughs> Because it, it, there's just enough separation. There's just a, mm-hmm. enough of a veil. Whereas there, in, in those places like, you know, developing countries or other places, you have to learn the culture because you're in the culture 24-7. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Hawaii, like, you can separate yourself from the culture pretty yeah. easily. Like, there's not a lot of probably gated communities and stuff down where yeah. in these developing countries where these people are having these mom and pop Shops, yeah, and know. that's true because like you don't need to be quiet mm-hmm. to live here. Yeah, you know, there's the language lot, thing yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, it's 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 an interesting dynamic we have here. There's a lot of a lot of pros and cons. Yeah, you know, well, what does cons it mean? that could be pros and pros that could be cons. <laughs> like, well, what does it mean to be Hawaiian? Non Oh God, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be <laughs> the guy to answer that. <laughs> That's that's a, a question, Whatever a popular I say, question. Somebody would be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say won't be wrong. It just won't be right. <laughs> All right, uh, well, let, let's uh, end this Instagram live. But somebody uh, wants to know, Kalani Kumok wants to know, what's on the horizon for you once you hang up your big wave surfboards? Um, gosh, just staying in the in the ocean, you know, I and staying outdoors like diving fishing hunting um you know hopefully making a living in a way that allows me to be around the things i love um yeah and i got tons of stuff to do with the the businesses that i'm involved in and the one we just started and also i'm gonna start farming so when i it's testing some orchard crops and that'll be a long project for you know, have a full off-grid farm. Wow, nice. Yeah, so I'm assuming that's going to take up probably 10x amount of time yeah. that I even think it's going to. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But I'll be happy doing it. So for those people who just see you as this surfer, waterman, what what do you do on the side? What is your side hustles? Which is not, it isn't really a side hustle. It's yeah. like your business. Well, I do stunts. I actually, yeah. last, stunts was where I made the majority of my money. Last, really? Yeah, in the last year, yeah. Like uh, TV shows, local TV shows? Yeah, I usually do. I, I'll do a couple months plus of stunts a year. And what so, kind of stunts? Is, is this surfing stunts or like? Nah, surfing stuff's easy. I'll take yeah. that all day. No, it's all fights and getting shot and kick down stairs and driving and all kinds of stuff. So I guess you're used to that from taking the beatings from waves. So you're, yeah. <laughs> you're used to taking a beating. I'm just like <laughs> constantly hurt, <laughs> beat up. So it's no big difference. But yeah, I just worked work on NCIS a bunch, on Hawaii Five O. I've worked a ton. Um, work on Magnum a bunch, and then the features that come through here. Oh. Um, I I travel sometimes for work. I did a job in New Mexico this last year. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of stunts actually. How did you I just get don't into talk that? about it that much. I got it into it doing, I think it was a surf double. Like I looked like one of the actors in Brian, the Brian Kailana. No. Yeah, it was The Rock. <laughs> Um, but I know Tana why he's a good friend. Uh, he yeah. Devils rock. Said a guy come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably love it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and Brian Kilana is like, he kind of took me under his wing, and he has ever since. I work with him a ton. Mm. Um, love that guy, and uh, yeah, he's just kind of was like, hey, when you're a stunt man, you win the contest every day. That's <laughs> <laughs> you're getting paid. <laughs> And uh, Brock Little was in stunts, and he would bring me in on a lot of stuff, too. Um, so it was that big wave surf community that got me in, into stunts, and I nice. and still am a part of it. Um, That's a cool side hustle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it, it's been great. Can you do parkour? What's your parkour like? Show us an example. I'm not a parkour guy. <laughs> it's, so, it's so dicey saying that you can do things in the stunt <laughs> world. I'm not one of those guys. Some people will totally BS and say they can do things that they can't. You I literally just get thrown to the ground. It would just, well, it would just be like, there's so many talented people. Mm. If somebody gets flown in, that's like a parkour guy, and you see what they really do, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I could never, ever say that I'm that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Okay, um underscore brady brown wants to know got any superstitions before events um no not really but i do have like a feel for the day i i i 
I, I seem to have a good sense of whether it's going to be a good day or not. You know, sometimes you're, you're like, ooh, this is, a, this is a, a dark looking day. Something bad could happen. You know, I don't know. Sometimes you get that gut feeling. Yeah. But so you just, there's, there's no like um, certain like clothes you wear. You put your left sock on before your right sock. No, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not that, um, <laughs> not that delicate. Like there's so, it's always such, such a challenge just getting ready for these swells, especially when you're traveling and chasing them. And there's so much logistics, like. I don't even have time. Mm. I'm just trying to get like six hours of sleep. Mm. That's just my goal is like try to get to bed yeah, and get some sleep in. Um, but you're usually busy, you know, with your headlamp on doing stuff and don't even got time to think about all this night. Stuff, yeah. yeah. All right. We got, we got a cool comment. It says listening from Seoul now. Stop by Shaka. <laughs> Yeah. No way. He sold you says that. <laughs> right on. We got somebody from Korea. We got Korea, Brazil, Australia. Hey, what do you think? Is Korean food <laughs> the Mexican food of Asia? Is Korean food the Mexican food of Asia? Let us know. <laughs> uh, somebody said, what about Latin America food? Oh, th- there's great food. Yeah. Like in Chile and Peru. Peru, they, some of the restaurants in Lima are so amazing. Never been there. Yeah, I really go good there. seafood. Somebody said, um, same same person, True View W says, love chicken katsu at L and L. I have an opinion on that. Let's chicken hear it. katsu is I think the chicken katsu at L and L is like is not the best, but it's not the worst, but it's always sad. Like it always leaves me sad, uh, satisfied. I'm like, offended. Really? No. <laughs> um I think I'm chicken gonna katsu, do you know like everything? Was there a part of your life where every single thing was quantified in how many chicken katsu plates at L and L it would be? <laughs> no, but okay, you'd be I like, that's gonna cost this much. <laughs> oh, that's like four chicken katsu plates. That's like how me and my friends would... specifically at L and L or just chicken katsu plates. No, L and L. Yeah. Chicken katsu. Yeah. I I honestly like like I'm never disappointed after eating a chicken katsu plate from L and L. But it's not the I best. I agree. It's not the best. I agree. Yeah. So I mean that's just like something I always think about is like if you just want a mid chicken katsu that's you'd leave satisfied. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like shame now <laughs> when I eat stuff like that. Really? Is it because... Like, I'm not super picky, but, like, when I eat, like, a lot of oils and fried stuff, I'm, like... I just feel like... You know when the, when your puppy, like, rolls in some chicken poop or something and they realize that they messed up but they just couldn't help themselves and they're just, like, kind of, like, sad? That's how I feel. <laughs> That's a very specific example. <laughs> no experience around that. <laughs> okay, that's funny. All right, guys, I'm going to close this Instagram live. Uh, mahalo so much for joining and just uh, throwing out some questions for us. I'm going to go. Um, if you want to listen to more, then um, this comes out in a couple of days. Bye. All right. Um, so now we can really talk about some controversial stuff. In the okay. Chat, so now. <laughs> just Let's do it. Yeah. Let's all get fired. <laughs> do you do you ever have to worry about like that with some of your sponsors? Like you have to watch out what you say. No, I, I've I've pretty much called the herd in that aspect. <laughs> like, but it, like obviously you can't say some really stupid stuff. You know, like if you say. You know, there's a limit. Like, mm-hmm. you don't, I don't say stuff just to say it. You know, it's just sometimes it's not going against the flow of the general pop narrative. Yeah. Or just like doing so, so something like psychedelics. Yeah. You know, do people look at you? Because it's something that is still being studied. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not super, I guess there's a stigma on it. You know, it's not very, um, it's not super accepted. But I think it's just because we don't understand, you know, a lot of things that yeah. people don't know about. They're just like, oh, I think that's bad because that's what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that, but that's a funny thing too, is like, if you, if you talk about things like that and you th- then run the risk of being like that guy, mm. like, oh, he talked about mushrooms on that podcast. One time. He does <laughs> mushrooms all the time. Yeah. You hear about that one guy who all he does is eat mushrooms? And yeah. Like, oh God, here here we go. Yeah. Well, okay. So I have a question because I've never done psychedelics before. I want to learn more about it. Like I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So why w- why would somebody do it and why would somebody not do it? Like co- convince me. Like okay. I'm I'm wondering like I'm kind of interested in trying mushrooms for the first time. Why should I do it? Um, I I think it's, it's it, for me at least it's been awesome to to see the world without the um, lens of your ego. It's really nice um, uh, to look at ways of thinking or ideas or problems from a completely different perspective that you haven't looked at it before and to just like feel connected to nature and everything. It, it's so much about set and setting. So like the, the, the cons would be like people who are like kind of leaning in the direction of like schizophrenia or something that's, you know, going to you know, f- a family history of it. It can set that off. Mm-hmm. And believe me, you can have a bad trip. Like if you're not in a good head place, you can it can be a, a hell. I haven't had one like that, but I've seen people. Mm-hmm. They did not look like they were having fun. But if you if you're okay with who you are and where your life's at at that time, and you're in a positive environment, outdoors in nature, mm-hmm. like here, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful North Shore. It, I recommend it. In that okay. case, okay. So so in my case, I don't feel like. I need to do it. Like, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm happy. I'm with everything that I do. I get, like, this natural high off of things. You mm-hmm. know, just hanging around with people. If people are smoking, drinking, whatever, I can just, like, hang out with them and have a good time. Like, I like I like seeing people have a good time. It's like mm-hmm. this uh, second, uh, second-hand high. Yeah. I mean, and that's... But what, what you're not getting is seeing life from a completely different perspective like right re- taking notes mm-hmm. and writing stuff down when if you are on like a mushroom trip you'd be amazed when you go back to the stuff later you're like damn that's true how did i not see that all all these years you so know? so do you think the thing that's stopping me from trying it is actually my ego because i'm thinking like oh I feel like I already have these good perspectives i don't really need it to see the world this way Potentially. And you're just like, you're just like a lot more compassionate when you're on it. Like I just like, I couldn't like hold on to things or like it, it, it's, it's interesting. And it's interesting to do, do it with like somebody like your wife or girlfriend or something, because all of a sudden it's like, boom, you're relate. You're just two different humans. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not that the, within the context of like a label of a relationship or something, you're mm-hmm. just like, Hey, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Oh, this is fun. Should All we right. go wander down here? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just different. I have an idea. Okay? Yeah. What if the next time you come on this podcast, whenever it is, if you even want to come on the podcast after this, you might get canceled after this. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> what no. if for the, my first time ever trying shrooms, it could just be like a microdose. Yeah. I do it live on the podcast and we have a conversation. You think that's a good micro, idea or a bad but idea? If you do a micro, micro, you don't even feel it. So well, so I have to macro dose. Just yeah. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> are you are you down for that? I'm or are down. You, or you think that's a bad idea? I'm down. The first time ever, I've never done drugs in my entire life. Uh huh. And I do it here on the Hawaii. It's not Boxing. drugs. It's a plant. It is a plant. They, there was a study that said that it's closer to humans than it is to plants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just going to correct yeah, myself right? there. It's a is fungi. It, yeah. And, yeah. like, you're a fun guy. It's a fun <laughs> guy. Like, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's coming from the earth, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so do a lot of poisonous things, I guess. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys want to see me do shrooms for the first time in my life, let us know here in the comments or whatever you're watching this on. Uh, I'll bring, like, my <laughs> bongo and burn can, some incense. Can we get, like, maybe, like, two more people here? That like Just so it's kind of like a group setting? Yeah. Or, I feel like... That it would cool. just be, like, the... I guarantee you it'd be, like, the longest silences in between people talking. <laughs> and then one person would be all... <laughs> and everyone would be like... <laughs> we'll see You're how like, it goes on God. the vibe. It could be the worst Just don't do it live. <laughs> okay. You can't do it live. Well, could I could be extremely we can, disappointing we can, we can, for people. We can have people edit it. Like, why am I even trying this podcast anymore and just walk off? 
<laughs> go sit under a tree. I guess yeah, we we don't yeah. know. But um I'm I'm open to doing it for the people. You, now you have to do it. Yeah, yeah, talking about it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sierra, am I allowed to do that? Okay, nice. Uh, <laughs> there you go. We'll do a shroom party. Yeah. Joe Rogan does stuff on his podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm Be t- <laughs> talking in bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna embarrass myself, but I have no ego, so I don't That's care. That's why you can't do it live. Yeah. You'd have to look at it later and just be, because it might not, it might just not make sense. Okay. Because the things that are happening in your head and like the comments that are so out of the blue, like I, I picked up a buddy in Holly Eva um, and he was so high on mushrooms uh, like a couple of months ago. And I was like, wow, this is like the first time I've ever been around a friend on mushrooms when I have not been on <laughs> mushrooms. I'm like... And I'm just like enjoying myself, just listening and just be like random comment out of nowhere <laughs> in the car. Like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> he knew how to do it. Yep. <laughs> or like some r- r- random thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally do that too. <laughs> like nobody knows what's going on in yeah. your head and you're like responding to it. And there's no context whatsoever. It would also be interesting because it's not like you record yourself on shrooms. Mm-mm. So I guess you get to see what you're actually doing talking about and relive it yeah yeah be interesting so, yeah we'll see <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep you guys updated <laughs> that, that that'd that be really really cool yeah. yeah dang i don't even know where we segue from that now uh, so what, what was your best experience on psychedelics um surfing uh this wave in indonesia that that's like one of the most amazing waves in the world and it was on fire Mm. pumping and I, I just had the best time of my life I just went and surfed a part of the wave that nobody surfed and spent all afternoon there and it was just like laughing and smiling there's these Brazilian guys sur- professional surfers that were there and uh, no nobody was surfing this end part of this wave where it, the wave actually gets bigger on the end and it just goes in a really shallow reef um, but they had a f- water photographer with them and he saw me out there so he swam out and took photos and then the next day the brazilian guys paddled out and they're like oh man our friend has good shots of you he's like but every photo you're just smiling in every barrel <laughs> i'm like yeah i bet i was i was having the time of my life <laughs> see the only thing i'm worried about is if i do it is one of the main reasons i don't do anything is i always want to be in full control of my actions so that's what yeah. scares me is that I won't be able to control what I do. And it's best not to have responsibilities mm-hmm. when you, cause then you have that like anxiety of responsibilities yeah. and like, just, but we'll try it. Maybe it'll just be a special Patreon episode. We'll just check a GoPro on you. Yeah. <laughs> just follow me. <laughs> it'll be on your only fans. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon. Go subscribe to uh, my Patreon. If you want to support me in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I, I want to wrap this up. The um, sun setting, the, it feels so nice over here. Yeah. I hope um, people are watching the uh, YouTube or Spotify video because we got a cool background right over here. Um, uh, what I want to do um, to end the podcast is I want Jordan to just give us one random topic to talk about, and then we'll end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this clip. <laughs> yeah, think, think of something. Unless you have something right now that you can think about i think there's two kinds of people in the world there's the people who just walk across a crosswalk and there's people who look both ways before crossing in a crosswalk (laughs) one type of person thinks this is a crosswalk i cannot be hit but they don't realize it doesn't matter if you're on some painted lines or on a dirt road you get hit by a truck, you get hit by a truck. You know, it's a, it, I always find that interesting. I always watch people in crosswalks. The ones who don't pay attention and just step out in the road just because mm-hmm. they think the system's taking care of me kind of thing. See, I like that you said that because I, one of my pet peeves uh, is people crossing the road and not acknowledging you. They just think they're entitled. Oh, and walking to slow. And it's, I don't want to be like if, if you're elderly or whatever person. Yeah, and they, God, 
just the slow walking too. And a lot of times the slowest walker in the group of tourists is like the youngest guy. Like that is just pathetic. Dude. Yeah. Like try harder. Come on. I wish I, w- I were meaner so I could honk my horn. Cause like even uh, the other week when I was going to um, the Bulls parking lot, just driving and there's that crosswalk right by the hotel. Um, there's this uh, tourist lady and her son or whatever walking they don't even look like you said there's two people they don't even look they just walk right across and i'm right in front of them and like i'm going like driving my truck to pretend like i'm gonna hit them and they <laughs> still don't even look like i was like yeah. trying to scare them like hit, acknowledge me it's <laughs> like throw up a shaka like i saw the heaviest maneuver i've ever seen it was one of these days where the traffic was terrible on north shore and on the side of cam highway just past Eukai. Um, there's like no parking. I think the pipe event was on and, um, and a tourist put on their hazards in the middle of cam highway, waiting for somebody who has like just opened their car and grabbed their towel out. Like as if they're at like a parking lot waiting for a stall, but blocked all of cam highway. And you can see in like, it's in the Hollywood bound lane. They're stopped right there. And it's just bumper to bumper cars behind them to as far as you can see. That jerk was like, was willing and just, I just laid on my horn and the guy's just like, <laughs> that, uh, like how rude of, do you have yeah, to be? The lack of self-awareness. Just I like, don't even know if it's a lack of self-awareness. I think they know exactly what they're doing. They're just being, they don't care. Yeah. They don't care. Mm. Yeah. You can't do that here. No. Yeah. I think you just, we live in a community where we think about each other yeah. and we go through the same struggles. Like who wants to be in traffic? Nobody. You know what's funny is like people are like fully rallying together a lot more in that regard. Like my wife was like, oh, it's so cool. I the day before that, she's like, I went down and a local guy ran up to me because I was I was just checking to see if, you know, <clears throat> where we're going to park the next day. And he ran up to me. It's like, hey, I'm leaving, but I want to give my spot to a local person. Are you looking for a spot? <laughs> <laughs> she was like. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and right. then I had a guy do that to me, too. I was like, oh, that's people are sticking together. Confession. I try to do that every time I leave the surfing parking lot. Is I always, in the back of my mind, I don't think I said this out loud before, but like, I'm always hoping a local brada comes or like a local girl comes. And I can be like, oh, yeah, take my parking spot. There's but, uh, something that's like so bothersome about it, like just really gets under your skin is being at your own home and not even being able to like park and participate in your own home. Yeah. That's right? a, that's a good way to put it. I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's not so much a parking spot. You're like, what? I can't like go to the beach where I'm from. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the, that was the whole issue with the, um, they're trying to put meters in the bulls parking lot and um, have people pay to park now. Mm-hmm. They had the whole, whole rally a uh, couple of weeks ago. That's messed up. You gotta God. pay to surf. Well, how, how about how about the state maintain the infrastructure better than they want to charge for parking? Yeah, just charge the tourists. On, how about some clean bathrooms? <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to do like a, a an emergency gargoyle on a, a doorless <laughs> stall, <laughs> like a around the brush away the syringes before I. <laughs> perch myself up on that toilet gargoyle. and use that wax paper, toilet paper that they have in there. I gargoyled so many times in Madagascar. That's the only way we could go. <laughs> I wish I knew that term back. In the- hey, guys, I got to go gargoyle. <laughs> and you're like, is there enough toilet paper for me to like put like an ice sheet of toilet paper so it doesn't splash on me and still have enough to wipe after? You- on. If you want to meter the parking... Make the bathrooms nice. Come on, yes, guys. yes. And uh, here's um, like a life hack for uh, toilet paper. We use way too much toilet paper when I was in Madagascar. Like sometimes you wouldn't take the whole toilet paper roll, or you travel, you just bring a little bit. You'd be surprised how many times you can fold a sheet <laughs> and use the whole square of toilet paper. When do paper. you stop folding it? When you finally get shit on your finger? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's there's like there's like four four <laughs> levels. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> I, and if you want to check out my book, I have a book uh, where I have a blog post about um, why I think uh, like cabunes is that's what they call it. Like um, pit latrines are better than um, regular toilets. Wow. Yeah. 
I I I think I mean I can th- you're in the natural position, squatting position. It's like it's just better. Yeah. Yeah. My life hack: get a um uh what's it called the um squatty potty. Squatty potty. Yeah. I got yeah. that for Christmas. You get oh. it, get it all out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do you, sit. I do you sit get that one that's been poking you in the lung when you breathe in deep? <laughs> I gotta get (laughs) some gum you swallowed when you were 12. (laughs) Still stuck there. (laughs) Oh my god, this podcast deteriorated fast. (laughs) This is what happened when you when I have no script. Yeah. So you this is why I have my laptop on me when I I do interviews. This is just a regular talk story. Special Uh episode. Special episode. To kick off the new year. (laughs) Um well how do you feel about um bidets? Bidets? Yeah. It's a great idea. Do you have a bidet? I don't. Is there a reason why? Just haven't gotten around to it. Mm. Everybody's been telling me to get a bidet. That's why. I'm down. I mean, I mean, just some maybe some people are just they feel too vulnerable and they can't do it. But uh, feel <laughs> feel confident. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work my way up there. I used it once. Maybe um, that'll year. be the big breakthrough that comes from the mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a bidet. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll quell your ring fear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jordan, uh, give us give us the last question so you can end this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> please. Um, are you happy? Me or? More? Yeah, happy? I'm I'm very happy. I mean, I'm I'm always like a I'm a look forward kind of person. I don't like really dwell on on past accomplishments so much. So I'm always looking forward. So I'm always like, I always feel like I could do better or be better. But, uh, so yeah, I, I'm as happy as I can be being that kind of person. Mm-hmm. You know, I always see room for improvement. What would you just add on to that? Um, what makes you happy or um, are you happy? What would you say is missing from your life that you wish you had? Uh, what's missing is more structure and organization. That's, Feel that. that's what I need help with because I do too many different things mm-hmm. and it's just switching gears back and forth so much that, uh, some things get lost in the mix sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think I'm happy. I'm really happy with what I've done in my 29 years of life. Like, I, I mean, I haven't won any competitions or anything. Me um, neither. <laughs> well, man, a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> wave of the years yeah. is basically winning a competition. Um, but I feel like I could die tomorrow and I'd be happy with what I've done. I think, you know, just like the having a kid, getting married, that's probably like the, the last thing. Yeah. I mean, there's always things to accomplish, you know, it's building the business and traveling more and publishing more books. I mean. But, but that's the thing, too, is I think of, like, hey, let's say I was, like, liquid $100 million. Mm-hmm. Make a ton of money all at once. I probably wouldn't do much different. Mm-hmm. Like, not much would change. Yeah, You'd just have that security. Yeah, you wouldn't that's have it. to worry. You wouldn't have to sell feet picks on Feet Finder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know you know, I started that? I You literally did that? I literally did that, paid $30 for the yearly subscription, and I made zero dollars in <laughs> two months. <laughs> Dude, I would Come be on, horrified if somebody feet. like paid for it. I'd be like, God, who is that? Do I know them? I Have just, I seen them in real life? No, so the story behind this is I did the thing to pay off my student loans. Uh-huh. Um, people would message me because I was the odd, like I did odd jobs. So somebody messaged me saying, hey, um, have you ever, has anybody asked you for pictures of your feet? And I was like, no, and I was kind of just like, because the first message was like, congrats on doing what you did. That's awesome. And I was like, I just respond to everybody. And they're like, have you ever done that? Are you open to that? I'm like, are you asking for pictures of my feet? Was, stop it. I'm, no, I'm not joking. This is, I, this is real. This is real stuff. I said like, oh, is that what you want? They said, I'm a gay transvestite that loves hot surfer dudes. I had long hair. Hot surfer, straight hot surfer dudes feet. And <laughs> go I, to the beach then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't they probably didn't live here, but they said I'll give you $25 indefinitely. Um if you send me a, one pick a day. So I went on my um cal- calculator oh app. My <laughs> God. And I was like that's $9,000. You're a <laughs> foot whore. <laughs> hey, so I did that and I was like, "Oh, this is free money." So I stood up just real quick just 
took a picture, sent it, and this guy was like, oh my gosh, so hot. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Send Wait, me twenty five dollars. So not only do you have to send the f- the foot pictures, you have to like kind of communicate with See, this person. And that's too. why it stopped. That's why it stopped because that's he what wa- ruined it for you. He 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 wa- he would also call, call me stud master. <laughs> <laughs> He like say stud master. Oh my and, god! And then you're a brave man for telling this story. I don't know if I would share this if it was me. We definitely got to do one with you on mushrooms. Yeah. Who knows no, what's in there that you're not oh talking god, about? I'm afraid I not. I can't wait. Um, and then, but he wanted me to refer to him as you know an F word like F A G G O T. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that anymore. Yeah. Um, so I, I was after that. I was like, I don't really feel comfortable. <laughs> like I'll send you my feet, but I don't you really want to. You probably do that. Uh, totally fix this person's issues that they have. <laughs> I'm just here to change <laughs> the world, Mark. <laughs> so uh, basically, that's why I, this was like two years ago. So I've been hearing this scene stuff like, oh, my! I bought my mom a new car because I've been secretly taking pictures of her feet and selling it on Feet Finder. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. And then, oh, are you a little sad? Did it kind a of little, hurt? Did it, a, does it a, sting? A little bit because in my track record in the last couple of years is like I've done something and I've been like, I th- I thought I've like excelled at it. Mm-hmm. So I had like this, this confidence that like I could do anything. <laughs> and I got <laughs> door shut real quick. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm Dude. happy I did that instead of me like, yeah, I can do anything and surf white male. I feel like yeah. I, I mean, you could, that, that that was very brave of you. <laughs> do you have to do? You, so okay, on the on this feet finder, whatever this weird thing is, do you, is your profile picture just your feet, or do you got to hold out and wait for people to buy it? You, do do you want? Is it like a headshot of you? And people are like, oh, I want to see what That's, the downstairs, I, like the down downstairs. <laughs> I, I, I put a headshot. Like. I, I posted this on my Instagram, like telling people that I was going to do this because I was hoping some followers, because I have some, some followers that are always like messaging me weird things. So I feel like, <laughs> well, at least I probably can like make money off of them now. <laughs> <laughs> and like everyone's fake. I thought they would support me, but I guess oh, not. Oh, where's the yeah. support? What kind yeah. of stalkers are you? <laughs> Yeah, so um, you have yeah. to support your prey. Trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. yeah, that's that's my uh, feet finder story. Jeez, I can't can't unhear that. <laughs> 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 you oh, could, that's fantastic. I, I guarantee you could make some some money. No, no, there's a niche for every. Everybody's into weird like random things. I, that's just horrifying to me. <laughs> <laughs> really? I guess everybody needs a hobby. It's a bit. I'm like. Okay, like if somebody has like attractive feet, I totally get it. But like a dude's gnarled ass <laughs> talons, like there's there's like some weird Buffalo Bill shit going on in a person's life to be into that. I feel like, but yeah. who knows? Who am I to judge? Yeah, I think I'm prob- we're pretty normal. I don't, but who knows what goes on behind the scenes? Yeah, people who are knows? into weird things, and that's they what I've are. learned. On Feet Finder. <laughs> that's the moral of the story. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all. Yeah. So, <laughs> mahalo, Mark, for yeah. welcoming in us into your house and talking stories. Um, I'm excited to uh, talk story with you again, part three. Let's do it. On shrooms. Yes. Yes. I'm down. So, everybody, go go check out Mark, everything he's doing. Support his businesses. Support his surf. Unfortunately, if you're into his feet, don't support his feet <laughs> finders because he's not into that. <laughs> but um, if you want to support me, head to Patreon. Um, yeah, go ch- um, leave us a review. Check out the podcast. Um, you're, I guess you're listening to it right now. <laughs> I'm a mess without a script. <laughs> you're doing right, fine, we're, buddy. We're, we're done. All right. I'll see you guys next time on the Hoi Podcast. I'll be home.